All right, good morning. It's your boy, Big Rich, and this is another mob story. Now, I know last week, because, you know, I haven't been able to put up some stories. I know there was a car crash in front of Pat and Mr. Tano's house. Anybody seen Fat Pat and Mr. Tano? Let me know. Anybody see him? Anyway, I'm not going to do that article. I am going to briefly talk about it because this is uh, this next article has to do with my Canadian peoples. Salute to you, Canadians, especially my man Montreal Paul. Hope everything is good. Now, there was a car accident in front of the Musitano residence. Two cars crashed right in front of the house. I don't know if it was a diversion. Were they trying to get somebody out of the house? Was it an Anthony Camello move when he crashed into Frank Cali's car, then knocked on the door to apologize before he assassinated him? Were they trying to get somebody at the house? Was Fat Pat Musitano at the house? My man has been missing still. But anyway, let's get into this next mob story. Italian probe reveals how criminal blockchain gives Toronto area mobsters international authority. And this is about Project Syndicato, which we uh, reported on last week. Italian court documents reveal that Canada's mobsters are more strategically powerful than they had thought before, an expert on the drangheta says. When his brother was killed last year in an ambush, Vincenzo Muia became the boss of his mafia clan in southern Italy. One of his first acts of leadership was to gather his loyal soldiers to plan their defense. Next move was avenging his brother. For that, he went to Canada. If I don't know who killed him, how can I sleep peacefully? How can I sleep, he lamented, according to a translation of police wiretaps that captured his conversations. Fucking wiretaps. Again, if there's a company out there that could put out anti-wiretap technology, you guys will get fucking paid. I wish I went to school for engineering and shit. Because this is, this is exactly the stuff I would invent. I would invent everything and anything so the government couldn't monitor me. Get the fuck out of here. Jesus. Me and Kia with these fucking wiretaps already, right? Unwittingly, Muia's arrival in Toronto this spring to consult mafia leaders living in Ontario came at a terrible time for the grieving boss. At that moment, York Regional Police had an ambitious anti-mob probe underway targeting the very people he came to consult. So this guy obviously wasn't reading the newspapers or looking on his internet to see what was going on in Canada. And he flew in at the wrong time. It was too hot in the kitchen, and he flew in right into the fire. His presence in Canada, police in Italy say, helped investigators not only understand more about the murder of Muia's brother, but also a raft of other crimes, producing 12 arrests in Italy, including one of a Canadian-born man in Toronto. It was the international counterpart to the large Toronto area mafia bus announced with fanfare last week. And its surprising findings highlight how important mobsters in Canada have become in the global underworld. Canada is popping. And again, I stumbled upon all of this by accident, right, from about the mafia. When we first started putting up the reports and I was like, yo, Canada is popping. I got to finish watching Bad Bloods. I think season two is out, if I'm not mistaken. I got to I got to I got to catch up with all this shit. Italian police had their interest sparked on January 18th of 2018 when Carmelo Muya, known as Mino, was shot dead in Soderno, a mafia stronghold in Italy's southern region of Calabria. The toe on the boot-shaped map of Italy. It was a significant event. Why? Mino was the boss of his mob family. One cell of many in the Drangheta. The proper name of the powerful mafia in Calabria. 
and the Muia's family, in turn, is part of a confederation of Drangheta families in and around Siderno that is often called the Siderno Group, considered one of the world's foremost criminal enterprises. You know, and I'm glad there's still criminal enterprises because I give you another criminal enterprise, the American government. Thank you very much. Muia was apoplectic over his brother's murder. And just in case for those that don't know what apoplectic means, it means overcome with intense anger. He started deconstructing and analyzing the ambush, looking for clues according to the Italian investigation. Who had known where his brother was going? Who would have the motive to kill him? Who was capable of being so bold? He settled on a chief suspect, someone with a sharp grievance, someone whose brothers were killed during a previous mob feud involving Muia's family. The wiretaps captured Muia's complaint that the victors left a surviving brother who could someday seek vengeance. When you cut weeds out of the grass, if you don't get them all, they will grow back, he said in Italian. When you do things, you have to do them right, he said in Italian. And this is all on wiretap. Muiz pulled family loyalists together and ordered them to rearm and get ready, authorities allege. He did not want to act rashly. However, he wanted proof. And so this past April, Muia, along with Giuseppe Gregorassi, one of his alleged underlings, left for Canada to spend a week or two trying to confirm what he suspected. Unfortunately, it was an inopportune time for them to come. That's it. They went at the wrong time because Canada wasn't playing right then and there. And they were watching and they were listening. It was an inopportune time for them to come, said Sergeant Carl Matinen of the York Police New Anti-Mafia Task Force. We happened to be live on wiretaps when they flew in. Muiz allegedly met with two brothers, Angelo Figliomeni, 56, and Cosimo Figliomeni, 54, collectively called Ubriganti, the brigands, according to Italian authorities. Police announced Angelo's arrest in Vaughan, Ontario last week, the centerpiece of the York probe. Matinin named him the head of the Figliomeni crime family. Cosimo was not arrested. Italian court documents referred to both Figliomeni brothers as fugitives in Canada, having left Italy ahead of mafia-related charges. The meetings in Canada, authorities allege, revealed Muia's seeking answers and advice on the consequences of pursuing and getting revenge on his brother's murderer. The meetings revealed something else, however. Something that shocked even ma veteran mafia investigators in Italy. There has been a shift in the Soderno Group's power structure tilting towards Canada. For decades, the Drangheta family of Soderno operating in Canada, about seven of them, have been governed by a board of directors called the Camera di Controllo, or Chamber of Control. The local board, as in other countries around the world and other regions of Italy where clans have spread, have all been subservient to the mother clans of Calabria under a body known as Il Crimin di Siderno. I'll say it again, Il Crimin di Siderno. Police in both countries now say that Drangheta's Canadian presence has become so powerful and influential that the board north of Toronto has the authorities to make decisions not only in relation to Canada's underworld, but also back in Soderno. Canada is popping, ladies and gentlemen. The Canadian board can have influence over the entire Drangheta, Italian authorities said. 
the governing body of Sederno branch no longer operates only in Calabria, transmitting orders abroad, but also sold directly on Canadian soil to give it more effective and efficient command structure. Italian authorities said in court documents translated in English, they're popping. That's what that means, they're popping. This shows that Canada's mobsters are more strategically powerful than we had thought before, said a professor who specializes in the Dranget. From the wiretaps, it appears that, differently from the situation portrayed in previous investigations, the Chamber of Control in Toronto can extend its strategic resonance to Soderno as well, for the first time reversing the order, said this professor. Decisions might be taken in Canada first, then they go back to Soderno in Calabria. This is fucking interesting, man. It appears to be both a reflection of the realities of immigration and a strategic survival plan. A large number of respected and influential Calabrian mobsters have immigrated to the Toronto area, including some fleeing Italy's anti-mafia probes. However, if police make a decisive sweep against bosses in Italy, there is already a parallel structure operating with influence and international recognition that can keep the business running from outside of Italy. Salute to my boy Shattered. Great, great article. It's your boy Big Rich, Ruckus Radio. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Our live morning show will be back tomorrow morning, July 31st, 9 a.m. But again, salute, like, comment, share, subscribe, and if you could throw us a donation, salute.